see more and more deeper tunnels, we see bigger diameters, and we see loads and loads of uh, projects that maybe 20 years ago would not have happened. And we are not so sure that we have made up the time and we are so far advanced in technology to cover all of them. Yes. And that worries us a little and we do see a lot of uh, friction and also some financial losses for all the industry, all the parties concerned and also us. We are badly struggling with that class of business. TBM is obviously the method where you can drill most of the big diameters, although we have seen open, open cut tunnels where there is big uh, surfaces being, being mined. And uh, I do remember one not far from here, it's the, still the biggest motorway tunnel in the world that went absolutely fine in, 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 a, in that method. It's not to say that all go wrong, but some go horribly wrong. There is maybe not enough uh, thought at the beginning of how they should do it and they don't probably know all the methods that are around and all the machinery that can be built and that will only come out whilst they do it and then is sometimes us picking up the, the bits and pieces. I'd have to say that like if you go back 15 years we had a multitude of the premium we get now. This is a consequence of the financial turmoil and of uh, our financial world we're living in. To give you a number Mm, I'd say 15 years ago we had easily three times of the premium that we have now. But the, the marketplace is growing also though. The marketplace? The, the number, of, the number well, of projects around the world. I wouldn't say so. We have seen a little bit of a, of a setback the recent years as the, the tube of financing has, has stopped for, for a number of reasons we all know. And, uh, and some owners, some project owners, they, they, they can't get the, the money together. They want to get the money together. I wouldn't say it's a lot more than we had seen before. I, I, I wouldn't say that, that owners are overconfident. I'd say most of them do know what they're entering into, only that they, again, have an oversupply of providers of, the, of that service, and they may, might be telling them some stuff that is not exactly what it is in reality. But this sets us back into a situation where we were some years back when, we are exactly, when the industry was we were, very difficult to insure. Absolutely. We are 15 years back at the time and I was still there in this industry where we were thinking let's stop this class of business. But this, you know, you, 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 you can't help it if, if something is designed so risky not even the best code in the world can help it. And it's humans on these machines or, or working fronts and they might take the wrong decision. I'm a civil engineer myself and I really like to see what, what they do and I get into these machines, I see tunnels and I'm really proud of what they do but then I'm thinking some, on some of the cases the, uh, the contingencies are not big enough you know for, for whatever reason they put up like one billion uh, of, of contract value and they only put another 10 percent on top for contingencies and that is burnt before it even starts. It is a bit imprudent if, if you build a house and say, I'll do this bang on for half a million. You'd have to be careful and prudent and say, no, there is some vagaries in this. Maybe I put another 100,000 pounds or, or euros on top of that and I can play with it. And you know, it's just, it's just a game of all the parties involved. They want to bring it down and someone has to go in public and the public doesn't want to have cost overrun and all of that. And in the end, we see so massive cost overruns that the mm. whole system is a bit of a funny one. We are losing a lot of money and I don't think, even that I'm representing a big group and we have some compensation internally, I'd like to think we will be very, very cautious in future. Especially on, on the, the really fancy ones, yeah, like a triple deck 20 meter, don't think we will be on that. This is a bit like, you've seen it once, you've done a, a 14 meter, and then uh, a non-engineer will say, well, why can't you do 18 meters? Then we have three lanes each way in the same tube. And they don't think of the consequences. They don't see that from 14 to 18 is almost twice the surface. They just think, oh, it's just four meters more. There's a massive difference. Well, it's not so different for, in an open cut uh, project where you have a sprayed concrete lining. You are also entering into the subsoil that in that case can, 
completely collapse. In a TBM case, it won't collapse altogether. You'd have other consequences. But we see a lot of collapses in, in open uh, face methods. And, uh, and that is, sometimes it's a partial uh, problem. Then you continue. But it, it, we are suffering as an industry altogether, tunneling altogether, whether this is mining, roads, railroads, hydros. It's always the same concept. We're getting into, into territories where like 20 years we didn't want to go. Cross rail is, is, a, is, a, good is, a, is a really good example. Yeah. This is, but this is not, uh, I would say this in terms of the diameter, it is uh, it's box standard. It's nothing really fancy. Had we tried this with, I, I have to be careful what I say, but I'm not saying that 20 meters altogether is impossible, it depends on the situation. But I would think it more prudent if you had two tubes mid-size instead of one big size. Mm -hmm. This is, I can only speak for, for what we pick up in the end of, yes. uh, of, that, of that game. And we had, been, we had been on smaller ones that had been very, very complicated and they had been run fantastically. Yeah? But then they've given themselves a lot of time. The owner had been ultra cautious with all sorts of uh, contingencies, with restrictions. And that is always a good combination. But if you have a like a, a tight schedule and a non so not so responsive owner, then then it's it's risky.